What is up, Retro Maniacs? Welcome to the Retro Card Chat Podcast. My name's Mike, and I'm from Mike's Retro Trading Cards. You know, after this podcast, we are heading out to our 29th annual Mike's Upper Deck Fantasy Football League Draft. We've been doing this for 29 years. You know, it's the time of year when hope springs eternal for all of the participants of the league, even those that haven't won it in the last 28 years. That's more than half my life, 28 years. But yes, we are going to be going down. Maybe you have your fantasy football draft this week too. Good luck if you do. But I'm joined by two original members of this league been with us all 28 years going into number 29 they remember the shop with the three (laughs) tables butted end to end yeah they are joe day and epr how how you doing guys you excited (laughs) of course i know ep is because it's the only time of year where he thinks he might be able to win it and then very shortly into the season he knows there's no chance but by by week three i don't care about uh transactions anymore i don't care about uh, doing the waiver wire i don't care about anything so that usually i I give up that usually helps yep yep (laughs) oh ep joe where you at joe (laughs) Uh, are you coming to the the draft like i don't know where you are (laughs) It looks it like looks you're in a good, church yeah, in a Russian something. prison. It does. <laughs> Russian prison. Very nice Russian, Russian prison. I, I am in town. I am at the Inn at Turkey Hill. I come here every year. The internet, famously terrible. I think I have a plan for next year, though. I think I have a plan. I think I know what I'm doing next year, so I think we're set. But this year, I am laying on my bed. I'm chilling. I have my coffee here. And uh, if if you see me laugh, this is what's going to happen. Laptop's going to be a moving. So, and I have won how many times in the league? Have I won six championships? I don't I think I've won. I don't keep I track of how many you win. And I think you won, what, three or four? I won three. Even Rob has won one. I'm pointing to Rob Rob's right now. Won Even one. Rob has won one. Well, it, it makes EP feel better that our old friend Dave Kimber hasn't won. That's true. Well, you know, he, he's a good help. company. He was also there from the very beginning, too, right? He's been in every league. Yes, every, he every was. Draft. Yes, yes, he was. He drafted yep. Jim Harbaugh first in our first. He did. Yeah. And Katana no, Carter in the second. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Captain comeback. Yeah. yeah. I think it drafted Barry, did I draft Barry Sanders with my first pick in the league. Probably. I mean, it, may, it checks Jr. out. <laughs> it might have been Griffey. It might have been Griffey. I, th- I think Griffey. I asked if I could draft Griffey, and you said no, so I had to go with Barry Sanders. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Well, good times. I'm excited. We There aren't that many of us that actually still get together in person mm-hmm. anymore. We've got some people scattered throughout the country. but Utah and... We should have seven. We should have seven, I think. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. That's yeah. half. half. Yeah. 14 yeah, it's a 14-team league, so. league. Yes, it's a... Yeah. Yeah, we're we old. Right. We do it right. <laughs> <laughs> we do it right. Exactly. Oh, so what's new and exciting, everybody? And Joe... Hopefully the viewers won't notice your internet issues by the time I have yes. this all edited and everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. I'm Act sure. That like everything is fine. Everything A-OK, I'm sure. Oh, there we are. I'm sure everything will be great. Me, well, we're getting um, him freezing up every once in a while. But we can hear him OK. So it's. Yeah. We're, we're, we're yeah. Just you laughing. see EP and I laughing <laughs> randomly <laughs> yep. at something. Right. It's because on our screen, Joe probably froze up in an <laughs> interesting, funny position. Yeah. All like right now. morning. <laughs> <laughs> we are professionals if nothing if nothing else, else if nothing else no uh I, do we want to get into the the first topic first or we'll skip that okay no we're, we're, we're not there yet but <laughs> okay we're not there yet i am in town for the draft i'll be here for a few more days ep and i are going to be playing golf tomorrow morning no this, this um, morning or whatever Monday, EP Monday morning, calls this morning, what right. he does on the golf course this You're morning now, this morning right after, right, right, after right, right now actually right after, right after that's right why the internet's recording. bad that's right. why the internet's bad we're out <laughs> yeah, on the golf right. course this is all a green screen <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be drafting while you're golfing mm-hmm. to all sorts of like. shit going on. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what's new and exciting with you, EP? Well, I have a, a little nugget that I want to share. Um, so, um, Joe, I've been waiting for the nugget. Yeah, so, so uh, Joe Biden is on pace to ha- to give the country seven trillion dollars in debt, which is the same amount that Donald Trump did. 
And in the last 50 years, only four times has America been in a surplus. The American, the, the, the federal revenue has been in a surplus only four times. The last time, 1999, boys, stand up and take a bow. We single-handedly, the, the car connected community single-handedly lifted the country up from the sorrows, from the depths that presidential candidates won't even talk about because of, because of they, they, they know that they're doomed for it every time. But we, chasing Achilles Smith and Dante Culpepper and Donald McNabb, single-handedly brought this country up from the depths of, of nothing. So I just wanted to make sure, share, share that. I saw that the, this past week. It's like, man, you know what? We're, we're doing it. We're, we're great. Times like were really good in 1999. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's why we have so much 99 football laying around <laughs> in our box, right? Things right, were just right. so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I no, lifted the economy no, myself no. with Topps Chrome. I'm pretty <laughs> right, sure. Yes. Yeah, pretty sure you did too, yeah. <laughs> Tops had the record year of that, year, <laughs> which hasn't been topped yet. No. Oh, uh, well, good times. Yeah, yeah. I was a little worried where that was going to go there for a minute. But same. Yeah, same. <laughs> we got through it. We got through it. Everyone. Of all people, it wasn't going to be EP to set this down that path. <laughs> no, right, no, right. I would not do that. <laughs> Instantly lose half our subscribers, <laughs> regardless of which way you go. Yep. But we're good. We got through. Uh, we got out of it. We are good. We're good. <laughs> we're good. All right. Well, let's get into it. The big news this week: Joe Day set up at his first card show ever, and I thought it'd be fun to talk a little bit. We talk to EP all the time about doing the card show stuff, but this was Joe's first time being a dealer. Like, how'd it go? What do you think? Uh, it was wild. Um, I, you know, I only, apparently the, I don't know if this is true for EP. They're laughing because I froze everyone in case you're curious. Um, I'm not hundred yeah, percent sure if yeah. this is true for EP <laughs> as well, but my table fees were completely free. I don't know if that's like a first time thing. Like, you know, you go into the bar the first time you get your first wow. drink for free. That's kind of how it felt. And, uh, yeah, I had a great time. I sold like it. Fanatics you know, I sold gives you their, their that's how they get you. Great for yeah <laughs> yeah that's how they reel you in um but yeah i sold uh sold a handful of cards had a really good time it was more fun just talking to the people that came up to the table talking to the other dealers um some interesting customers which i suspect is at every card show mm -hmm. um yeah. but yeah we had we'll uh, we had a me that way <laughs> <laughs> no my my uh, mvp vip whatever you want to call him mike looks over there he, he paid for i think my entire table fees <laughs> I mean, uh, like at least. And then our buddy Mike Jones came out. I made a trade with him. EP refused to make a trade with him. That was kind of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, EP was willing to buy his cards and then sell him cards, but not trade him cards. It was wild. It was a wild yeah. experience. <clears throat> Let me say, as somebody who watched the whole process when ep traded cards with mike jones once before it was agonizing to watch because ep was so agonized with trying to make the trade like he wanted the cards but he didn't want to give so i knowing that and having seen that before the whole willing to buy from or sell to but not trade makes sense because of the way less stressful like almost as stressful as like not winning a fantasy football championship for 28 years <laughs> i see where you went there um <laughs> i want to put a counter up here in the corner <laughs> um i will say too you missed out mike right towards the end of the day our buddy card show kevin ep can talk more about this intense sale negotiations it was i recorded some of it mike i'll have to show you at the draft it was intense they made a huge deal at the end of the day ep and i are splitting that profit which is awesome thank you ep for that <laughs> sure and he promised me a frozen chocolate covered banana That's no all that I was had. never on the table you were the only one talking about that and literally nobody that you <laughs> you said that to even bill later at the at the end of the day when he was there that was, that was never gonna happen <laughs> I tried. I, I tried. I thought Card Show Kevin left. He did. did he come back. back. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell, I'll tell you all about wow. that one in, yeah, in a minute here. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, overall, though, well, it was a good time. Next time I'm in town, maybe I'll do it again. Um, I don't have like a ton of inventory like you guys. So, you know, I, I, well, 
might have some more clear ultra wolverine inventory if i do it again but <laughs> that's a story for another day i'm sure <laughs> for another day but uh yeah i had a great time uh, a lot of fun mostly talking to the folks the dealer the other dealers and stuff like that and hanging out with my buddy ep that was really the the pinnacle of the day ep on zero sleep Driving me home, <laughs> driving me back to the hotel, which kind of made me a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie, a little bit. He was. I did. I did, I, I did okay. Though. I did okay though, right? Didn't I? Do you did okay? very well, considering. Yeah. I was. I was. You did better than some people driving our new car. He's here. That's so clearly he got home. <laughs> yep, and I got. Yeah, that's and right. I got seven hours sleep, baby. I feel. I felt terrible when I woke up. I was like, oh my god, this feels terrible. I can't believe these people do do this to themselves. But I think that was maybe more the cumulative lack of sleep in my body. Yeah. yeah, I think that was that was more that. Than How much yeah, sleep yeah. did you have the night before? Twelve, min 12 minutes. Twelve, 12 minutes. minutes. Twelve minutes. Wow. Yeah, EP mm -hmm. is highly entertaining though when he doesn't get any sleep before the card show. So <laughs> oh, now you got to see it in person. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. It There's was one point where I was like trying to do stuff, and my hand was like shaking like crazy, and I said, "Joe, look at this," and he he's like, "Yep, that's not not great." That's not normal. Yeah. <laughs> so can you believe there are people that do this all the time, Joe? No. Was this I could never do it. No. Do it no. Nope. One time was Too fun. I would never. And and again, I didn't do anywhere near as much work as EP does, I'm sure, every single time he goes. I just kind of threw some boxes together. Holy crap. I couldn't do it. I couldn't stand there for my feet were killing me. Even <laughs> if I sat there, I mean it's on the it's on the hard floor. And there's like just moments where you just sit in there. If I was a dealer and wasn't hanging out with EP, like a friend, and I was just sitting there waiting for people to come up, I, it's, I throw myself into traffic. I'm just saying it. Oh my gosh, it's a grind. Jeez. It was a grind there for a little bit. So, but no, I could not do that on a regular basis at all. I'll stick to eBay. No offense to people who set up a car toes. I'm sure you love it and you do well. I'll stick to the comfort of my air conditioned home and my recliner and eBay. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yeah. Nice. Too much work, but how do you do EP? Do you have a good show? I did good. I just wanted to interject one thing on, on, on what Joe was talking about. He did have multiple people, including you, uh, Mike, who uh, came in and asked for a chair to sit down and go through your boxes. That's a good sign that you have inventory that people want. And like you had that one guy that got a bunch of, you said Todd Collins cards. And then you have people going Todd through the market. Cards. I mean, like he didn't like, get them all though. No, no, no not all of them. Around. He Mike left the doubles behind. I yep, think Mike scooped Mike scoop those <laughs> up real quick. But no, but no, no I mean, didn't. if you have people asking for a chair to sit down and go through your boxes that are you know unsleeved cards, like and on top loaded cards, like that's a good sign that you have stuff that people are interested in, like uh, and for, for for the shows. So I feel like you you know you had, you had some pretty despite only having like the three boxes and a couple things in the case. I, I think I thought you had some good stuff out there. Probably you had to have. I made I made someone's day with ninety mu. They came up yeah. with like they had a list. They had a checklist of they were trying to put that set together. And they're like, I was in the bathroom and EP's like, yeah, I think he pulled those all out of a pack. So they're all like pretty crisp cards. He goes, oh, this is awesome. And he literally bought like $20 worth or so. And I was selling them for what, 50 cents a piece. So mm -hmm. he he was he got close to his set. And I think you're probably the only one in, in that entire show that had that kind of stuff there so that's why that's that's a good, good stuff i thought so i i had a really good day uh card show kevin as we talked about he came up to my table one of the well, i'm sure if i was his first stop but it was early in the show and he got he spent 60 dollars on a bunch of, of, of random stuff which covers my table fees like you know table fees are, were, were 60 bucks for my two tables and so um yeah that was great then i, you know, I had a bunch of other people and mike bought a bunch of stuff for me like a huge like, like i think i got like 100 cards out of my 50 50 cent box something like that so you have really to give good. me a better deal so, though or i i, I, I don't uh, right, right. Yeah. I, had to, I had to give him give him a better deal. I had I I I, I was talking to a couple people about this, like a couple people about this. I increased my price a little bit from the last show because I expected you know foot traffic to be a little less than it was for the musty show. And so, um, yeah, for, for the my lower end cards, like not not for for everything, just like the lower end cards, because like, I figured I'm for the stuff first, I go through, stuff that Mike goes to the through. viewers and listeners. Wait, yeah, the thing he is, raised the price on the stuff I buy. He went through like the first row and a half of, of a four row box, thirty two hundred count box. And uh, that's when I was like, hey, did you happen to look at the prices? <laughs> He's like, I was ready to put them right back in. <laughs> oh, and, and so, by the way, shout out to, real quick before I forget, shout out to Mike bringing us coffee. Yes. Because that's what EP needed is more caffeine. He did. I did, actually. I was, I was about ready to save yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that was a lifesaver, man. I drank it too fast, though. I always do. It's one, one of and that put me in the awkward have to bring 
three coffees in a carrier thing. And I don't know, maybe I'm just getting old. Maybe I don't remember right. But those carriers are not what they used to be. Oh, if, they, if, if you don't pick them up in the right way, they just everything just falls out of them. So, yeah, going from the two cup holders in my car to having to take that and, and babysit it the rest of the drive so nothing fell. You guys don't know how much effort I put into getting you those cards. Well, I appreciate it even more, more now. Mike. That's why I, really I thank, thank you. you. That's so why I, I yeah. specifically That's why you gave me a deal, right? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, so Joe, oh. do you want to share how much you made? I'm, I'm curious. Um, I didn't count it up, but from the sales I had, it was probably like around 100 bucks, you know? And it's just wow. stuff, again, a lot of it was just stuff that was sitting in my basement literally like I, in my, you know, it's finished. Don't think it's like a, Mike, you didn't buy musty cards. Don't worry. It's a finished basement, but, um, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Though to be fair, they might've been in my grandparents' basement for about 20 years yeah. before then. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it was probably about a hundred bucks and I would say 75 of it was stuff that I never had any intention of selling so it was like someone mm -hmm. came up and just handed me 75 dollars, basically yeah but the marvel Definitely. stuff sells okay from time to time so that stuff you know i figured i would sell eventually but yeah for the most part i was i was pretty pleased with how it went yeah you didn't have much there either and that was all you know other than the couple cards you had in the cases it was all low-end stuff so to get a hundred dollars yeah. out of low-end <laughs> yeah. stuff like you said it's like you opened up the box and there was a hundred dollar bill there oh, was a hundred dollar bill that. randomly yeah exactly <laughs> and and with the percentage of the deal that ep made with kevin i'm at about 150 now so for the commission nice. I was, I was really working Kevin on that. You know, he didn't want to buy it. And I kept saying, Kevin, come on, look at this card. Pop three, only two higher. Mm -hmm. Come on. You got to, you got to snag this it? one. Yeah, he bought it. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Bought the Very Brady. nice. Yep. Yeah. I'm so ask what you got for it. Um, well, I mean, it was part of a package deal. So let me, let me just start, start oh, okay. back, start okay. back. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyhow, back, uh, horse back, up back it up a little bit. bit. Cause Kevin walks up to the table after having left. With he left the giant stack of cards. He showed me one card, had four hundred dollars sticker on it. He said he, he talked the person down on it, but he had a huge stack of stuff. I know what he bought for me, and so he was he was out there. He was he was in a, in a buying mood, um, and so he he left. He said he realized that when he was out, he went to, went to lunch and realized that when he was going out, that he was going to have to. That he told his wife that he's going to stop at Boscov's and get some shirts from you know for for the start of school. She always yells at him. Because he wears the same shirts every day. <clears throat> so, so yeah, he. Uh, he went to Boscov's and decided he'd stop back. And there enough, sure enough, there, 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 there was the Brady and my one of my Jeter refractors and another Jeter card and I think it was six total card, five or six total cards, including my Caitlin Clark from the National. And uh, yeah, he he said how much he said how much for all of it, and the sticker I had on it was four hundred. Uh, we um uh, you know originally he, he, there was one card that he didn't include in it, then he threw that one in to you know, make more of it, whatever, and then it ended up being four hundred total on the sticker. I got 300 total for it. Um, so that was, um, I, you know, I feel like I left him enough room. I got the, the cards were all pretty much priced uh, you know, based on comps from the, the, the last week's show. So I was really close on the, the comps were actually, if they were, they're probably eBay, eBay prices minus the fees, which is what I usually price my cards at. So he probably got a, I'm thinking, I feel like he got a pretty good deal on, on a lot of the stuff. And the, again, that, that, uh, Brady is a really super, really, really rare. Like, and so I feel like, um, I think he got a really good deal on that and a good deal on their stuff. So yeah, I was, I was happy with that. So yeah, my total, total take, I think was like, um, 470 some dollars plus positive after fees and, and, and everything. Nice. So yeah. Yeah. Good day. So you're going to be coming to Mike's card shop to reload for the next show. <laughs> I should. <laughs> you should all that money. Well, good job, man. That, I knew he was interested in that Brady card. Oh yeah. So yeah. Oh, I he figured. talked about it a lot. He, he tried to yeah, take, he was going to buy it back to the table. He asked, he asked to take it and took it over to the gauge. The one guy next to us is a big Brady fan and showed it to him. And I said, are you sure you don't want this card? Cause he said, if you take, show this to gauge, he'll probably come try to buy it from you. So yeah, it was a, <laughs> he, he was trying to sell it to him and then he brought it back over. And then that's when I, I took out all the cards and we kind of talked about it. And I hemmed and hawed for a while. Cause I wanted to get, I, I felt like I wanted to get a little bit more, but also understand where he's coming from with trying to, to, you know, make some, some money off of that, the deal too. And he said that he's probably going to keep the Jeter refractor from, from 99 finest, which they may actually made me feel pretty good. 
um, still. Yeah. So any, anyhow, he, he, at one point he, um, he tried to take that out of the deal and he took $50 off the price, the, the total price. And I was like, well, just, I mean, as, as Joe said, I grade cards to sell them. When I, when I grade a card, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I can increase the value of this. That's why I graded it. And so I, I put mm -hmm. it back in and, and did sell it. So. Yeah. Good job, man. That's a nice way to end out the day. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, wow. I do have, I do have footage a little bit of the negotiation. I, I don't know if someone wants to reach out to Karcho Kevin to ask him if it's okay if I post it. So he, he was like, po he would, he was totally okay if I posted on the channel, he said. But I think I'm going to post it to my Twitter. So if anyone <laughs> wants to see EP, I'll tag EP. I don't know if Karcho <laughs> Kevin's on, on the X, but I'll tag EP. And it is intense. It is like the cinematography is actually probably the best part. Oh, oh probably, probably, yeah. Yeah. of course yeah yeah did they give but, a award for that uh, card show you'll end up in the youtube do, sports card do, 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 documentary it's like documentary it's like a like a documentary yeah footage, yeah. Right? yeah it really is a documentary short it could be academy <laughs> award winning i'm not 100 percent sure but i might post that joe day 17821 on twitter check it out just in case <laughs> check it out <laughs> absolutely all right well that's sounds like a good time i had a lot of a lot of fun there and my mod pizza on the way home was delicious so <laughs> look good we'll move good. things on a little bit here we have a couple not there's like no news going on in the hobby <laughs> this week so i just want to you know throw that out there to people if you're looking for some breaking news this ain't it so we do have some updates though to some other stories we had uh jeff wilson do you you ever heard of him? He has a channel called, I think it's Sports Card in... Let me look it up. Yeah. J-E-F... J-E-F-F. J-E-F-F, yeah. Okay. But no, we like the joke. But Jeff Wilson <laughs> had... We talked about his $100,000 bounty on the one-of-one one USA Olympic basketball autograph card. He has raised it to 200000 So he... He must be saying he was trying to lowball us in the first <laughs> offer, right? <laughs> like, uh, that sounds and like not only that, he has partnered with Fanatics Collect. They want to give the person who has that card, I guess, a deal to maybe sell it on their platform or to have it go on the platform. Joe, now I feel like you might have talked about something like this at some point in the like <laughs> at some point in the time. We talk about a lot here. I don't even remember everything we talk about, but I do feel like you know this connection with Jeff Wilson and Fanatics doesn't seem random. Um yes. So I mentioned I mentioned last week that uh I was like, wouldn't it be funny if Fanatics just sent it to whoever they wanted to send it to and was like um, yeah, just, uh, we'll buy it from you then. And they're kind of not exactly doing that, but kind of, I mean, they want it on their platform. So do mm -hmm. they send it to someone who's friendly, who will then like, put it on their platform? I don't know. Like it seems real. Once they got involved, it's like they're, they gave you the disease. Now they're trying to sell the, sell the cure kind of thing. I, I just, I, I don't know. It's this, this feels so fanatics to me. Like, we're we're gonna ra randomly give someone send someone a card after selling six million dollars worth of these 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 crap cards. We're gonna randomly send someone a card, and then we're gonna try and get it from them to sell on our platform. So we're gonna make money on the front end by selling these crap cards for six million dollars, then make money on the back end by selling it on our marketplace to bring. I don't know if they're going to charge buyer's fees. They probably will have a buyer's premium on it. They get that. And then they're going to get all the promotion to their platform. It's just like, <laughs> they're playing chess, man. We're, we're playing tic-tac-toe over here. <laughs> it's crazy. That's the hobby circle well, of life, right? Like that's not, yeah, I mean, that, it really, really <laughs> that's been their motivation though, from getting into this, they're, they're getting all parts of this product at all different times in its life cycle. So I, I mean, except for the smart, grading, but except for the, except grading. For the grading, that's wild. Yeah. I'm shocked that they haven't gotten to the grading yet. Yeah. It's a, knows, yeah, they will. Right. I mean, yeah. it was a year. I, we give it a year. Like it's, yeah, yeah probably. 
I don't know. I mean, they're making money off of the cards that get graded, though. So maybe they're leaving that out of it. And they're like, oh, mm. we'll just make our money on the increase in value for grading. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe they'll buy PSA at some point down the line. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but well, yeah, I mean, they do what they do. And they're mm. going to make a lot of money because they have a lot of people that are shilling for them that are absolutely mm -hmm. going to keep kissing butt to get what they want and fanatics will get what they want on their end. Just watch, just watch the post national, uh, coverage. Just, if you want to talk about people kissing ass to fanatics, I mean, we'll talk a little bit about it, but the post fanatic the fanatics, best coverage. That's all it was, was a giant, you know, this, this circle ain't going to jerk itself situation. It's just, it's absolutely crazy. I think the fanatics collect thing was probably going to happen. That was probably going to happen anyway. Like, I feel like that was like, I don't want to say that they had a deal in place before Jeff Wilson even made his bounty, but I feel like that was just like a, a natural step, right? Like there was, there, there was no, that, that was not a shock. I don't think right for, for anybody, any of us. No, not at all. I, I, I feel like the fact that his offer got doubled at the same time that they also announced mm -hmm. that they're yeah. involved with it might be a little more to that than is being let on, but clearly you know, money will be exchanged. It will be his card, whether it is or not, or Fanatic's card. We don't know. And it will go up for sale by him on Fanatic's Collect and right. draw a lot of attention, like you said, Joe. But yeah, I, I'm sure there, it's not all, like, it's not a coincidence <laughs> yes. that his offer got doubled at the same time that Fanatic's it's, came into the picture. It's either Fanatic's kicked in the extra hundred grand or Jeff's wife gave him a higher allowance. I don't know. One or the other. I'm sure. I, they I, may have paid him to put it <laughs> on their platform too, or give him, you know, a really sweetheart deal, or he already has one in place. Who knows? Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, last episode you asked Mike, asked us if we thought that we, if we would take the, the hundred thousand dollars, the bounty or sell it ourselves. So it's two, it's 200,000 with the new for you guys, or are you guys still selling it yourselves? I'm still selling it myself, right? It's about to sell it myself. Yeah. Yep. Well, I definitely wouldn't do it for two hundred thousand because there is a huge basketball collector. His name is Nathan Burns from Grand Slam Collectibles in Tennessee, mm -hmm. and he has a bounty of five hundred thousand for the card. Now there is a catch that none of the autographs can have any smudges on it because he. He's a huge collector himself, and I guess he wants it for his collection. The only one out there, I'm not sure how picky I would want to be. <laughs> uh, maybe he has like a, a scale of, well, if there's a little smudge, it's 400000 But, But they're also willing to pay, if you don't want to sell it to them, they're going to pay $10,000 just for you to bring it in to let them take a picture and let him hold the card. Hmm. So maybe if I got this card, I might just start a tour around the country. Hey, 10 grand a pop if you want to hold the card and get a picture with it. <laughs> you could make way more money doing that than you could selling it to Jeff Wilson. Oh, uh, that's big, hysterical. Big, big, big. It is a that's crazy thing. Crazy one of one though, right? I mean, like legit. It's like it is yeah. the definition of a one of one. And that's why these so there's so much excitement about it. But I, again, yeah, five hundred thousand seems like the right price, probably right. Like that seems. I think we we kind of said five hundred thousand a million dollars is probably like yeah. somewhere around there is like the right price. But yeah, ten thousand dollars for like free money just to have let them hold it and take a photo. Yeah, I'm in. I take a road trip. And I, I would I would hope that this being one of the biggest cards in the hobby over the last how many years, I would hope that the autographs aren't smudged, <laughs> right? I yeah, mean, I would hope like but like. If someone smudged their auto, they should have like, oh, hold on. And then they destroy that card and they have them do it again. Like that should be pristine. There should not be a smudge, a streak, nothing on that card. It should be. And no an ding corners, pristine. no, no nothing. It should be nothing. Yep. Yep. It should be immaculate. A BGS uh, gold, uh, gold label. Is that what? No, no. What's the Black BGS? Label. Black label. Yeah. Black label. Nobody uses BGS. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still feel like, though, if you put that up for auction, uh, for some more reason, than 5K, it feels more like, it's a, like closer to a million dollars. Yeah, card, I think so, it? too. Those yeah. guys have all been playing in the NBA for a long time. Now, LeBron was under upper deck contracts, so they couldn't have. But, like, you, 
is there ever going to be another one of the three of them, especially on an Olympic card? Probably not. And, you know, think what you want. I know there's always Olympic hysteria when the Olympics are taking place and it dies off. But those 1992 Dream Team cards mm -hmm. are hugely popular 30 plus years later. So I kind of feel like the whole Team USA thing with this card will make it unique. Hopefully Fanatics is smart enough that they don't do it again. Right. But, yeah. I could see them doing it again with their pro unis, couldn't you? Definitely, I but that's maybe with the pro, again. but I, I don't. I, like, Once I they get the like license, they wouldn't with the Olympic. And I think I mean, yeah, uh, they, I they, there's kind of like this, like this buzz around this team because they they did get LeBron. They got all these guys to play this on this team. I think that's that's part of the reason why this is such a big deal. And that Team USA thing is a big deal. Like, and they could do like sticker autos in the future. They could do pro pro whatever in the future. But I think this one is special because of this moment in this team and the, the kind of like the, the buzz and build up uh, around it. Well, we also have a little more of an update to the update we had in the Marvin Harrison Jr. situation. Oh, wow. So Fanatics <laughs> refiled their lawsuit, and I'll just get down to it. The, the gist of what they're saying is they have a contract that is signed with a signature that looks a lot like Marvin Harrison Jr. signature <laughs> and doesn't look like Marvin Harrison Sr. signature. I saw the examples that they had of it, and they're 100% right in what they're saying there. It, it is not Marvin Harrison Sr.'s regular signature. So either Marvin Harrison Jr. signed it, or Marvin Harrison Sr. signed Marvin Harrison Jr.'s signature, because his is just pretty much an MJH with, mm -hmm. like, you know, a line going through the whole thing. It's very unique looking, and the signature looks way more like that than Marvin Harrison Sr. So Fanatics is saying that either, A, Marvin Harrison Jr. has been lying under oath about this, and he did sign it, or B, Marvin Harrison Sr., signed it as junior and it's fraud. So <laughs> I, I feel like this is not going to be the last time we talk about this story <laughs> because it's just the gift that keeps on giving, but wow, like come, what are they doing? What a crap <laughs> what show, right? <laughs> doing? Yes. I, I don't need, I don't even know what to say. I, like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was at, no joke, I feel like I was at a hotel recording one of these the first time we talked about this story. <laughs> I, like this just general Marvin Harrison Jr. story. And I think it was here. Like I'm like 90% sure this has been going on for like, it feels like a year at this point. Um, but I said last week, Thanksgiving is going to be super awkward at the Harrison household. I kind of, I'm, I'm bringing that comment forward even more now. If, if Senior was signing it, unbeknownst to junior i don't think it was unbeknownst which constitutes no 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 way i don't they, think yeah, it was yeah, unbeknownst no way. either yeah. that i i don't think so either but like at this point it's it's almost like if you believe the the conspiracy theories about shohei and his translator like it kind of feels like that where it's like they're trying to find what story will make people stop asking questions like what what, what can we say to not you know to to kind of smooth this whole thing over it just it feels that way to me. Like, okay, well, this story didn't work where I said I didn't sign it. Now we have to come up with another story where my dad doesn't go to jail for fraud. I mean, <laughs> what is going on well, at the Harrison It's a, it's a, it's a civil lawsuit. So, I mean, like, they haven't, I don't think charges have been filed or anything. Right, so right, right. He's not going to go to jail. But it, it, you're right, Joe, describing it like the way you described it. Attitude. It's, 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 a, it's a saga, man. Like, it is, it has been a saga, right? So, there, I mean, there's a Marvin <laughs> Harrison Jr. going to jail joke to be made here, but I'm not going to make it. <laughs> Uh, just Google Google um, him and you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, um, yeah, but I, I be feel hysterical. Like... Wouldn't it be hysterical if it was the mom who was signing all this shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where is the mom? Mom, stop it! You got to stop signing our names. Mom all this? <laughs> mom, you gotta stop signing this. <laughs> Marvin Harrison really need, can't pull a hammy <laughs> in the last couple of weeks of camp, and he really needs to to put up in the games, right? Otherwise, he has nothing he better. I mean, he better, right? Like. like yeah, be the laughing stock. Yeah, Mike's going to draft him in the first round. He better put up in games. I already have in a couple <laughs> leagues, so yeah. I, yeah. I feel like though, I feel like this is them trying to think they're outsmarting these big companies with high paid lawyers, and they're trying to find a way to get money for 
the Marvin Harrison organization and then also sell himself as just Marvin Harrison, like thinking that he can sign separate deals for, you know, the company he set up and then for himself personally so he can get twice the money. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but it kind of feels like that's basically what they're doing and Mm -hmm. trying to find any reason they can. Like, when we went back to the last time, we we're saying, "No, oh, well, it was signed by the organization, not by me." It's like, come on, come on, <laughs> just play. so yeah. Uh, you know, I I just saw this. It was the thirtieth anniversary on August nineteenth of the nineteen ninety four Major League Baseball strike, and probably a lot of people that weren't even around at that time, although. We're we have an older audience because we're old people and young people don't watch us. So, <laughs> but yeah, that I I was really interested in this because I I had a card shop during this time and I remember this. But like it was it was really kind of an important part of the history of the hobby that a lot of people I don't even think understand. Like the junk wax era pretty much died with. The baseball strike they had the strike at the end of the year in 1994 they canceled the world series it hurt baseball terribly it hurt hurt card collecting terribly too uh pacific or no action pact i think it was had done a market survey at the time and the collector base dropped over 25 percent from like 1991 to 1994 oh and the revenue in the hobby had dropped 30 percent from that time so i had opened my shop in 1991 and things were crazy like i'm talking like covid crazy they were that way in 1991 on a different level yes <laughs> Not, you know million dollar cards but in terms of the amount of people in the hobby and people buying product and you know there was a lot of stuff that was overproduced, but you didn't know it at the time because so many people were into it. And I always like to make those parallels to like now, because when you have so many people buying stuff, you don't notice how much is being made. But once those collectors maybe leave the hobby, you're left with, oh crap, they made a lot of this stuff (laughs) because a lot of people were buying it. And you know, when, the World Series was canceled. It really hurt everything, but it did force the manufacturers to rethink how they were doing the hobby. And that was really the mark in time where things started to change, where production levels were way down. You know, the 1994 Leaf Limited, remember they started putting numbers on the boxes. Mm-hmm. I've talked about that before. And it was really a different time. It was a horrible time to have a card shop, let me tell you that. How I got through that period of time and stayed in business, I don't even know. But yeah, like this was a real turning point for the hobby, though, to go from the junk. That's when they started selling all this stuff for 5 and $10 a box. And people were like, holy cow, I can get 89 Donruss for $5. <laughs> they really made that much of it. Yeah, they did. <laughs> There's probably still huge pallets full of cases over there. But yeah, it like kind of a interesting point in time, but it was really a key to changing how things were done and yes i joke about things there is too much product being made today but you keep it in perspective it's nowhere near the (laughs) levels they were printing stuff from like 85 to 93. were you collecting cards i i know joe you weren't into sports back then but ep i i was wondering like where you were and all that yeah i mean i collected i like i have i was talked about it on one of the shows like one of the my, my extra innings like in 1993, me and my dad bought so much upper deck uh, baseball, like just so much. Like that 93 was probably 92, 93 was probably a peak year. I talked about on one of these shows about um, the, the uh, 1993 leaf, the amount of that that I purchased as well. So like 93 was a huge year for me. And then, of course, in 1994, I was, I was a Yankees fan and I started really paying attention in like the late 80s. And like they were they were terrible. They they're oh, dude, if there it is, 93 leaf. So <laughs> I started paying attention, you know, in late late 80s and like early 90s. And the Yankees were just awful. Then they were like they were one of these teams that were really like pitching no hitters and losing the, the no a no hitter. Like that was the kind of team the team they were. They were just terrible. And then 94, they're like making this run. And there's like it's like super exciting. But, you know, you got this like this cloud over the season that they might strike and then they strike. 
and the you know it, it wipes out the World Series and everything. And like like the, that was I was like, like so excited about the Yankees, and then no World Series. And I, I remember I remember from ninety four to ninety five. I've talked about this on the channel too. Like I have I, I purchased a, a box of nineteen ninety five. I think it was a, a Don Russ uh, at the National a couple years ago because. I didn't buy a lot in 94, 95. I have a couple, 19, 19, some, some upper deck from 94 and a, a couple random things here and there. But when you look at my collection, like there is a gap from like 1993, 1996, where I didn't buy that much stuff. And, uh, it, and it, I, I really, for, and I, I feel like at least for me as a collector of, of all the sports, like the baseball series, one baseball kind of sets the tone for the collecting, collecting year. And then everything else builds off that because it's, you know, it happens in February and then you have football and, you know, in, in late summer and then basketball after that. And it kind of like sets the tone for, for the collecting year. So when you have that baseball, they have that, that strike possibility. Then all of a sudden the strike happens that just, for me, it just shut me down. And I didn't get back into it. And I've, I made up for it with 96 metal and, you know, some, some other cards, or whatever, 96, but I have a, I have a gap in my collecting where 94, 95, where I have a very, I feel like a, 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 a pretty big gap. Yeah, you're one of the many people that left yeah. the hobby, and you know it. They canceled the World Series. Like, right. imagine I, I I remember like I still remember the feeling when I heard they were doing that of like just disbelief that they were actually going to cancel the World Series right. and thinking, <laughs> what, why, what are they going to do? And it hurt until. You know, two guys started to hit a whole lot of home runs. And, <laughs> yep. you know, people can, you know, I, I see a lot of arguments from younger people that, like, claim, oh, they didn't save baseball. Absolutely. Oh, Mark McGuire, oh yeah. you, you weren't paying attention. You, you weren't alive. Yeah. Maybe you weren't alive then or didn't pay, weren't paying attention if you don't believe that that saved baseball. Um, I think I think um, collecting Kobe in 96 was kind of the thing that kind of got me more more back into it a little bit like the kobe and the, the 96 also had like eddie george got a pretty good crop of fo football rookies if i remember correctly and so that kind of got me back into it but yeah like as far as baseball is concerned like there there was that that i mean i think i think 97 there's a pretty good home run race as well and that kind of got back into it a little bit more but it wasn't like nothing like 98 98 like you said it was a magical magical i'm getting the chills thinking about it right now because it was like i'm gonna we were at work turning on i work in the sports department but still like we would turn on we would what we would be watching the games and be keeping track of it and we'd turn on sports center in the morning like it, i mean that was a you know, i was gonna say that deal. was the big thing for me i'm not a baseball guy. i mean i may be the channel's baseball expert but you just kind of wasn't yeah. a huge yeah. baseball guy back then and i remember sports center in home room before school started <laughs> they would put it on and right. they would you know we would be watching what sosa and mcguire were doing and you know it's just I, I didn't care if baseball was safe, quite frankly. I didn't, never watched it, but like that, I knew about them and I didn't watch a game of baseball. So, <laughs> yeah. like that, to put it in perspective, I couldn't tell you who's, I assume Shohei Otani's leading in home runs this year. I have no clue. I, <laughs> he's, I he's assume not, he's not, he's, he's, he's 40, not sitting there. He just hit 40 40 last year, but he's not leading in homers. So. <laughs> yeah. So I have, I have no clue who would even be close to the home run. I think uh, there were a couple home runs in the Pirates game, maybe a Pirates in number one. I really don't know. But <laughs> I do know who was leading home runs back then. You know, yeah, I right. do know it was McGuire and Sosa, you know? Yeah. That really turned everything around. It would just, it, I mean, even, even Kobe, though, EP, like people that collect now, Kobe, Kobe wasn't like LeBron James was in 1996. Like mm -hmm. Kobe wasn't that guy that everybody was like, oh, he's the next Michael Jordan. He's going right. to be the big thing. Like he wasn't even a first, the first overall draft mm -hmm. pick. You know, right. there was a lot of Allen Iverson hype too in that year. But yeah, yeah, like Kobe, there was interest in basketball. And as the season went on, like that was kind of like, after, that was the first year after like the Jordan stuff, like the first class I remember people really going after and buying basketball cards of, but yeah, even like Kobe wasn't like in 2003, LeBron coming into the league, there was so much hype. There was a lot of hype for Shaq in 92, mm -hmm. but Kobe didn't right. have that amount of hype. So he kind of developed it a little more over time, but yeah, they, that did help some mm -hmm. to right. get over right. the hump of not having baseball sales but yeah there were a lot of people out there that just stopped collecting cards people i never some of them i never saw again mm -hmm. so i will I, say i have a unique perspective with that <laughs> like right. knowing oh i saw this person then after this point in time never saw him again 
Yeah, so. even like 96, 97, I, I, wonder, I, I got back in collecting, but it was uh, basketball and football were more, I was more into basketball and football than I was baseball. I did have some mm-hmm. baseball then, but I was going to ask, do you guys remember when, when did SP start? Was it 90, like 94, 95? 93. 93 is that 93? Okay. All right. Yeah, Joe? Um, I was going to say, I wonder what would have happened with card collecting if the strike happened in 2011. Do you remember uh, the NFL draft when it was the Cam Newton NFL draft year and there was like a legitimate strike fear that the NFL wouldn't start? Mm, I and that, yeah. I wonder... We didn't collect cards back then, but I'm wondering, like, could you imagine if that would have happened for football? Like, like a whole season, I, we were big into fantasy football, and I'm like sitting there going, oh, my God, my life is going to have no meaning <laughs> if they don't have a football season. What, what's going to happen? And, uh, yeah, I, I just I can't imagine that happening for football and how it would have affected the card market then because that, there was legitimate concern that they were going to strike that season. You wonder if that would have even killed fantasy football, right? Like, fantasy football is like a hugely popular thing. Like you wonder if like there are a lot of people who are like, well, I just don't, I don't like they, they'd be I'd miss a year of it and be like, okay, well, and then never get into leagues again. You know, like I would have, could have, I would have yeah. had a huge ripple effect. I think it helped baseball that they have such a long season and that they only lost the only, I say only like they lost their biggest, most important thing of the year. They only lost the world right. series. Right. They lost the- what they play for. <laughs> right, right, right. But they, st- I mean, they still had the full season for people to enjoy where football, if they had like just destroyed an entire season, like just, blanked it off the the the, the map like it just uh, that would that would have been a massive massive thing i remember thinking about that worrying about that too that, that was a that was that was crazy time all right well uh you know we did talk about fanatics fest a little bit last week but i wanted to talk to you guys a little bit because you know from episode one of this podcast we did the interview that uh michael rubin did with Bill Simmons way back when 2021, I believe it was, we've been doing this a long time already. Holy cow. But long time. you know, you know, Michael Rubin talked a lot about promoting and marketing the hobby stuff that's never been done before. I want to talk to you guys a little bit too. the stuff, you know, Tom Brady walking around at the card section of fanatics fest and buying rookie cards and stuff, not his own. He bought, did he buy it? Now I forget. He said he had a friend who collected somebody and it just totally lost you know, out of my old brain here. But Tom Brady buying cards, Gronk smashing and spiking a card on, on somebody's case there. And, you know, one of the things I've been talking about, they did the Travis Scott thing, which, by the way, those boxes that they sold there that if you were lucky enough to get it they're selling for three thousand dollars a box now and his card out of it alone is the base card is selling for like a thousand to twelve hundred dollars out of that so you know this is absolutely something that would have happened in like an apparel line and a sneaker drop or some kind of apparel out there and you know this is stuff that i've said many times they need to do to try to draw in a different market of people that might not know much about cards i think you know this is super limited but you have to limit some of this stuff like everybody can't have it if it's going to be special, then you can make some other products down the road that's more accessible. But I like all this stuff. If we're going to be completely honest, I think the Tom Brady stuff was really cool. Yes. I know they're walking around with cameras and they're getting it all to publicize, but that's what marketing is. It looks weird to us because (laughs) we're in this hobby that nobody does it done this kind of stuff is done for every other market out there it's normal to get big name people in so maybe somebody who doesn't collect cards sees tom brady buying cards and goes oh maybe i'll look for some of those and then they see they're like five thousand dollars a card right that's that's the disconnect though right that's the disconnect it's like oh okay maybe i'll get into cards now uh, let's go to Fanax Fest and buy some cards. Oh shit, they're all four figures. <laughs> Every single card is over a thousand dollars because the table fees are thirty five hundred or whatever. It's like, yeah, like we talked about this last week. It's almost like they want people to get into the hobby. They want to promote the hobby, and then if people would actually go to the show to take part in the hobby, they'd be like, "Well, I'm priced out here quite a bit." So, like, I get it, but I also I don't understand. 
the the setup of the show to bring other collectors in. That being said, Tom Brady walking around with a camera crew, it, it, he fit right in with the hobby right now, didn't he? Like that's <laughs> he did, yeah. that's the hobby right now. Are are people walking around with camera crews acting super important around little pieces of cardboard? You know, that's kind of that's kind of the hobby in a nutshell. Jesus. And just to, to the to the to the Gronk point, um, he smashed that case. It was a Fanatics case. I'm guessing owned by Fanatics on Mealy Pop's case on at their table. Ironically, I may have bought something from them this weekend. <laughs> in case you're curious, I'm just throwing Re- that out. There, referenced so. earlier in the podcast as well. Referenced <laughs> earlier, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I worked, I worked in newspapers since, for as long as I've worked uh, at a like a, a real job post college. And um, if when you're on the other side, when you're on the other side of the camera, like like you know, we get access, we, we see things, hear things. When you're on the other side of the camera, like marketing can look gross. Like it, it can feel feel kind of gross sometimes. But I feel like if for, for fanatics, like they're they're nailing it. Like they're they're doing what they should be doing. And uh, I, again, I agree with all of the the thoughts and concerns about thousand dollar thousand dollar cars that sort of stuff. But I also feel like they are trying to get people sports fans that are maybe aren't collecting interested in the hobby in, in certain ways. And I really think they're mm-hmm. doing a good job of that in that, that, in that regard. Yes. Again, for us, it feels kind of gross seeing people walk around with cameras and, you know, all this stuff being recorded, but that's how you, that that's how you show people that aren't at the actual event. That's how you show the, the sports fans. Hey, look at, look at Tom Brady being excited about his cards. Look at, look at Gronk being a Gronk goofball, but with cards and around cards and around card people. And that's in that, in that regard, Finex is doing a tremendous job, I think in, in the, in the marketing of the hobby. And, you know, I've been calling for them to do like a pop culture rap mm-hmm. set mm-hmm. forever and look at the popularity of this mm-hmm. with baseball cards in it, but they could do a tops Chrome, set of rappers and have autographs and i bet it would be huge listen to me if, i've been giving you guys tips you're part way there go all the way there if, but how cool would that if be? they can sell, sell tennis cards and if there are pickleball cards out there like they could sell rapper cards right like absolutely no a little bit bigger market for that <laughs> i think than pickleball strangely enough but uh, our, our our buddy troy the fish was talking about how much he loves opening up pickleball cards <laughs> yesterday at the card show blew my mind but yeah you're right mike i mean we were saying this when it looked like brian gray was going to leave leaf the first time and we were like oh maybe fanatics will hire him to run the pop century area you know like the pop culture area because he would be really good at it I, maybe that's where he's going. I don't know, but you're right. They need to do something with not just Topps Chrome, but a lot of the other products would be great for pop culture cards. They need to hire me. Of course, I have no contacts with any of these people <laughs> and wouldn't be able to yeah. help them actually do it. But I have a great idea. You're the idea man. You don't need the contact. Yeah, they, they got people man, for that. Yeah. You got the ideas. They don't need that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you know. It is fantasy football draft time. A lot of people probably had drafts this past weekend. Have them coming up this weekend. I don't know. We did ours. I've been doing a lot of them. I'm all ready for fantasy football. Joe, you had a cool idea. You you wanted to see who we would start a new PC of just based on fantasy football. Now, one of the things, I did a little poll on Twitter not too long ago. I asked people... Do you PC anybody just because of a fantasy sports league that you're in? I was actually surprised that only 25% of people said they did. I really thought it was a lot more because I've collected players because of my fantasy football teams. I know you guys probably have too, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem to be as widespread. Maybe maybe I just got bad data. I don't know. (laughs) It's a Twitter poll. They're pretty official, if we're being honest. But... (laughs) But yeah, let let let's just figure out who would who would you collect, Joe? I think the first one would be uh, Run CMC, right? I mean, I have a couple of Christian McCaffrey cards in my PC. Nothing major. I have a base optic rookie, and then I have a I call it a color match rookie. It's his optic orange, but the color is orange and blue, which are the colors of the Bombers. In case you guys didn't know, okay. and um, I, I I think yeah, you did. Um, but anyway, I mean, it's a it's a really cool card. I think CMC, I was kind of looking for an, a rookie autograph of his while we were at the National. 
but something like a color blast of him in his Niners uniform would be really good. I've had him on my team now since 2020, maybe, maybe even 2019. I've had him for a little while, which if you guys knew me and fantasy football, that is a long time for me to have a player. So um, I think Christian McCaffrey would be, would be the first one for me that I would try and do some sort of collection with. Maybe. Um, well, I like, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm kind of out on ultra modern. So they're like, I'm, I don't really, they don't really, um, the cars don't really excite me that much. Um, I, 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 I've had a couple people, a couple of players from, from the past that I've thought about collecting and I've, I've said to myself, Oh, I collect this guy, but I don't, I haven't really done it in earnest for any, any of the players. As far as like current player, I color Murray would probably be the one player that I would think about collecting. Um, you know, he's, my, my, my quarterback I drafted as a rookie and I've, I've had him in my, on the one team for, for quite a while. I think it would be him, but again, you're looking at a, a quarterback, which is super expensive. And then like, again, the ultra honor stuff, the Pepini stuff doesn't, doesn't really excite me that much. So if I had to be, if it had to be an older player, uh, like Joy Galloway probably would be somebody that I would, uh, I would I'd probably, probably pursue. He just popped into my head as somebody who I, I had my team as part of a, a, a trade that I made a bazillion years ago. And um, yeah, he was somebody who, a trade? Probably, you made a trade? I know, I know. I think that might have been the last trade I ever made. And uh, also, so yeah. EP could answer a, a a segment on what player now would you start a new PC of from your fantasy football and make it be Joey Gallo. I said Kyler Murray. I, I said I think Ultra Modern is, is crap. So Kyler Kyler Murray is is the would be the answer, I guess. So I would be Josh Allen. Of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Kitchen. Of course. And that's from daily fantasy football, <laughs> not even yearly, but yeah, he I won a tournament with him a couple of years back and it paid for my kitchen. So I love Josh Allen. He can do no wrong. I have a Josh Allen bobblehead on my refrigerator <laughs> in the kitchen. But I do want to get yeah. uh a, just a Don Russ rated rookie and a 10. Like I've been talking about that for a while. I really should have looked at the national, but mm. I came up with some other idea. I, I'm sure I would have found 8 million of them <laughs> at the national. Oh, yeah. Cause it's really All not a rare card. Probably. All overpriced though. Yeah. Probably, right? yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. But that, that would definitely be mine. Maybe Patrick Mahomes since, you know, I have him in a lot of leagues. I was kind of in on him early and he, he's the, a guy that worked out. So, mm. but that, EP said would cost yeah, a lot so much money. Of money. <laughs> yeah. So probably be out on that. Josh Allen would be my and now Mike, I'm pre I'm pretty sure that was a gift from me, if I remember correctly. Josh Allen riding the yes, Buffalo. Um yep. and <laughs> you should also get it's it's a great bobblehead. You should also get a Ruben Foster rookie card. Wasn't he the wide receiver in that game? That you paired so. with Josh that? Allen, I'm like 99 percent sure. No, I don't. I think he was the one I didn't play. That if I would have played him, I would have oh. won the fifty thousand or the hundred thousand, whatever. Oh. For, I think it was a hundred. Yeah. So oh. yeah, he was the one that really went off in that game. I had others. I forget who it was. But yeah, the guy who they had, like, did got well up the next year, right? You got a guy who got steamed up the next year. It's like, oh, this guy's going to be the, the the answer for the yeah. year, but he never was. But yeah, uh, uh, but won me a random daily fantasy <laughs> tournament that I got a like, new yeah. kitchen from. So, all right, well, you know, I like to play these grading number games with you guys. So I figured I'd close out this week. Have a new little game for you. Can you guess what the top five graded cards are in terms of number of cards graded for Tom Brady? Mm. Oh. <laughs> EP, you may have a chance at this because of the lag in my internet. Um, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> true. Very true. Um, all right. I'm going to throw out 2000 Bowman, base Bowman. Mm. 2000 base Bowman is the second mm. most with 7,703. Mm. That now, card is not rare. People do not no. think it's rare and buy it. Like not it is. rare at all. Sub question. Now, what do you think the gem rate is on that card? Mm. 30%. EP twenty seven percent six 
Holy cow, dude. <laughs> Holy cow, dude. So that card is not rare, but if you get it in a 10, it is rare. The, rare. Black, yeah, the black borders and the back yeah, yeah, on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, can EP, can you guess another one of the top five? Well, I got two I got two in my case, including a gold zone. I'm going to say press pass just because I'm thinking there were eight bazillion of them out there. And I agree with you. However, press pass is number six really? on the list with wow. 3,201. That's shocking. But let's have out. a little fun. What okay. do you think the gem rate is on the press pass? Oh, three. That, that paper stock, three. Fifth. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eleven. Seven. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, I felt like press pass would be number one. Maybe it's because I had like twenty some right. myself, yeah. but we <laughs> were that little small pocket in Pennsylvania that the people in press pass were like, we sell a lot of cards there. Let's get more press pass down there to those guys. <laughs> yeah, we were open it all. So. <laughs> all right, Joe. You guys have, uh, only have one of the five. I have one of the five. I don't know what EP is doing down there. Um, let's go Skybox Dominion. That is number three hmm. with 6,443. Can we guess? That's the him gem with Giovanni rate? Carmazzi, I believe. Hmm. I'm going to say that's a little bit higher because it's a. I, if I remember correctly, it's like a whitish border card. So I'm going to go 21%. I'll go 12%. I think there are a lot of cards that were sent in that are not good, probably. 32%, Ooh. which is by far the highest in this list of five. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Dominion knew how to make great quality cards. <laughs> we have... <laughs> we have... Bowman at two and Skybox Dominion at three. We need one, four, and five. I don't remember if this rookie was short printed or not. I can't remember 100%. Upper deck? Upper deck it is not printed. on. Was it? Okay. And yes, right. it was short printed. Okay. All right. Yeah, very short printed. Um, I am going to go another rough one Fleer Tradition. Fleer Tradition is number four. Five with 3,702. Can we guess the gem rate? 24%. Maybe. I got 25, one above it. Three. Holy crap. Three percent. <laughs> wow. Three out of every 100 <laughs> of those come back at that. I, you know, it's, it's an off center type car. I mean, it's got a distinct white border, so that might be the reason they're, they're really off cut. That must be it because I thought the white border would mean it's got clean corners, but nope. Okay. <laughs> okay. We have two left here. Can you guess any of them? Maybe? Is, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have a number of, a couple of them in my head, but, uh, I'm trying to think of ones that might, might work. Collector's choice. He had a collector's choice rookie, right? No. No? no. Okay. All right. Do I get another, no. another, get another guess then or not? Is that, is that my guess? They had upper deck victory. You get another guess. That's what, that means the same thing, right? Upper deck victory. Yeah, victory. No, it's a different set. One's oh. victory, one's collector's <laughs> choice. But, but okay. I will accept victory because he has a victory card. Okay. But it's not on the list either way. Okay, great. So I'm great at good. these lists. <laughs> well, Joe's the, the Tom Brady right, right. card expert. Sure, sure. Like, if I gave you a Ken Griffey list, which might happen in the next couple of weeks, we'll see how you do it. <laughs> right. um, I'm going to go, uh, this is this is probably not on the list. I'm going to go Bowman Chrome. Bowman Chrome is actually number four mm. on the list with 5,117 graded. Mm. And what is the gem rate? 6%. 20%. Twenty-three percent. I'm surprised you went so low on a Chrome card, Joe. I just assumed it would be pop control. <laughs> well, you, you have to take into consideration all the ones that were graded before COVID hit, so that probably raises mm. yeah the gem rate on that. True, true, true. Okay, we have one left, and it is the number one hmm. 
most graded Tom Brady card? I will give you a hint. It's a rookie card in case you haven't figured that out. <laughs> uh, which one is it? I mean, I'm going to go with, with what the one that I have again, which I think if I ended up still having them as Pacific, but I, it's probably not. I, I'm trying to remember what the first one was. But... Not Pacific. Okay. Pacific was, I believe, number seven on the list. Okay. They're they're up there, but it is not number okay. one. Oh, man. Like, I have so many in my head, but I, I don't. When I saw the list, I was like, huh? And then I'm like, well, yeah, that does make sense. It's a lower end card, but wasn't short printed. Yeah. Oh. Say it, EP. If you think you have it, say it. Is it metal? Skybox metal? No, it is not Skybox. No, that was was short printed as well. Oh, was it? Okay. All right. Can I just shout out if I, I think? I feel like not? a fool. Yeah, shout Anybody out. Anybody shout think. out. Fl- just shout out. Flare, yeah. Flare Ultra? Like, I thought about that a couple of times, but they were short printed too, weren't they? Oh, that's a good guess. Yeah. Yeah. It is a yeah, Skybox what? card. It's a Skybox hmm. card. Oh, shit. So, not not Prestige. Well, Skybox Prestige? No. Did they have a premium set that year? Skybox Premium? Is it Prestige? No? Not Premium. It's not prestige. That was playoff. Skybox impact. Not the min- oh, okay. Oh, oh. there were so many. There Damn are <laughs> seven thousand nine hundred and sixty-eight skybox impact, and the gem rate. That's a that's a white border or white corner card. I'm going to say twenty-six. 12 popped into my head. 12. 14. Very good, EP. 14. There so go. there you go. That was the Tom Brady top five <laughs> PSA graded list right there. Do you have 8, 9, and 10? So, Do you have the 8, 9, and 10 on the list? I, I no, only okay. did the top five because okay. I figured this segment would take quite a while. So <laughs> I got four of them. I got four of them. You did. And I'm did. very upset. Got I zero. Five. <laughs> yeah. I I, I, well, I did own one of them. I did own one of them. Did you have the impact? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. You've been morphing into a baseball expert. So no wonder you don't remember what Todd's Brady card. That's true. All right, guys. Going to wrap that up there because I have a fantasy football draft I have to get to. I don't know about (laughs) you guys, but I'm out of (laughs) here. That would have been pretty cool if I could have ended it. That would have been. But hey, that was a good chat this week. (laughs) I could. I'm just happy I didn't tip over when I did that. (laughs) All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Take care, guys. Adios. Hey, boys.